Welcome, everyone. Welcome, everyone. It's almost Rosh Chodesh Kislev tomorrow night. And we're continuing our pre Rosh Chodesh Fabrengans. So we'll start with the Nigan. You have a chance for more people to come on. This is one of Rav Ginsburg's Nigunim. Very, very, uh, very Lebedic. Chodesh Kislev, Lahodot or Lahalel. It's a time for praising and singing and uh, being joyous. I'm nighting, die, 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 Welcome everyone, pre Kislev for bringing. So I'm going to try to give over basically two different Torahs. Both of them uh, come from different Torahs from Rav Ginsburg, uh, some additions here and there. So first of all, if we look at the name of the month, Kislev, so you can divide it into the two syllables and read it. Kes Lamed Vav. Kes here means hidden. And Lamed Vav is equals 36. So you could read the month of Kislev that 36 are hidden in it. So what are we referring to? So everyone knows that on Hanukkah, we're lighting 36 candles. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 8 equals 36. The second Torah we're going to give over, we're going to understand what it's like if we add the Shamash to it. So I just have to say hello to my sister-in-law. I just see her face come on right here, all the way from Chicago. Okay. Okay. Um, so the month of Kislev, again, can be read, there are 36 hidden in it. So this, of course, are the 36 candles of Hanukkah. And this is alluding to the 
36 hidden tzaddikim. We have this tradition that they actually learn from a verse that we're waiting for him, lo, meaning Hashem. Lo is kiss lev, is the 36. And from that, one of the sages says that in every generation, there are 36 people worthy of receiving the, the presence of the Shekhinah. So along with this idea come many, many different traditions of these 36 Sadiqim. One of the understandings is, is that there are 36 revealed Sadiqim in every generation. And there's also 36 hidden Sadiqim. Again, that's the idea of kiss love, that there are 36 that are hidden. The Zohar adds to this that there are 36 Sadiqim in Eretz Yisrael, and there are 36 Sadiqim outside of Eretz Yisrael. Both of these together equal 72 equal chesed. Oh. Gonna say lechaim for Rav Yitzchak's right. birthday. Right. So I'm interrupting so we can say a lechaim for Rav Yitzchak's birthday today. Lechaim and many blessings for long life, good health, and much success. Lechaim. <laughs> it's a white Russian. <laughs> What's a Fabrangan without a lechaim? So... This is a, a, a birthday greeting for Rav Ginsburg that he's 76 years old today. And we're, we're blessing him with long life, good health, constant, um, constant Torah inspiration, and everything everything good. L'chaim, l'chaim. Baruch ata Adonai Elohim Elohim Shahakol niya bibarom. Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, in fact. Okay, so we have this idea of 36 sadikim, 36 revealed sadikim, 36 hidden sadikim. And this all relates to the, the lights of Hanukkah, the 36 lights of Hanukkah, is that we light the lights and we see them, they're revealed. But we also have this tradition that the lights of Hanukkah enclose the hidden light of the first day of creation, what's called Or Haganus that in the physical light that we see is another dimension of life, of light. That is the hidden light, the organ news, that was hidden away for the tzaddikim in the time to come. And we know it says, and all of your people are tzaddikim. And so on Hanukkah, that little flame which comes from the, the small pach of Shemen, the small cruise of oil that they found in the temple that was undefiled. So this represents the hidden light within each and every one of us. Each and every one of us has a small spark of undefiled, pure light that actually comes all the ways from the first day of creation and even before, because the, the Jewish soul actually comes from before creation. Because the Jewish soul is a chelak eloka mima'al mamash, an actual part of God above, which is coming before creation. So when we light the lights of Hanukkah, Again, there's two levels here, two dimensions. There's the physical light that we're seeing, and there's the hidden light. 
Now, the connection with 36, as we said, kiss lev could be read kiss lamed vav. Lamed vav is 36. Is that we're told that this or haganuz shone for Adam and Chava for 36 hours. 12 hours on Yom Shishi, and the Shabbat, even though it was already decreed that they would have to leave the garden on the sixth day, but God allowed them to stay for that first Shabbat, Shabbat Bereshit. And we're told that that Oregon News was shining those 36 hours. And when Adam and Chava left Gan Eden, that's when it was it was hidden away. And they asked, so it doesn't say it was like taken away. It was hidden. So the question is, so where where is it hiding? So a number of answers are given. They're all they're all true. It is in the Torah itself. So this is a very deep understanding that every time we learn Torah, including what we're doing right now, we are accessing the hidden light of creation. The hidden light of creation is enclosed in every letter, every word of the Torah. Another explanation is that the Oregon news is hidden in Shabbat. And that is one of the deep secrets of women lighting candles at the beginning of Shabbat. That women have the, the great merit, especially like when, when a woman goes like this, is bringing in this hidden light into the Shabbat. Another explanation is that this hidden light is in the menorah, in the temple. And another explanation is that it's hidden in the lights of Hanukkah. Because in the temple, it was only the Kohen Gadol that was lighting the menorah. He was doing it for all of Am Yisrael. But along with the destruction of the temple, where we no longer have the service of the Kohenim and the Levim, but we do have the service is our service. And that's why the sages say that Shachri, Minchan, Marav, they're coming to replace the Karbanot, the offerings. And everything in the Beit Knesset is a remembrance of the temple itself. So when we light the Hanukkah, it's like we're lighting the menorah. It's, it becomes our avoda. And so these 36 lights of Hanukkah, they are revealing the 36 hours of the hidden light that, that shone in, in creation. Now, Rob Ginsburg took this idea and he added something very, very beautiful is he explains that there's two, really two miracles of Hanukkah. One is the well-known uh, miracle of the lights, that when they came to rededicate the, the temple, the, they could not find any pure oil. And instead of waiting for the, a, a lengthy process of making pure oil again, they had found one cruise of oil, and everyone knows the story that they they went ahead and they and they lit it. They they, they jumped on the opportunity, and it lasted it was enough for eight days. So that's that's the miracle of the light. But the second miracle is actually the war itself, and when we say the special prayer for Hanukkah, Al Nisim. Most of it actually has to do with the victory in the war, the few against the many, the weak against the strong. It was all about the victory in the war, which at the time seemed miraculous. In our time, if we, if we really would understand correctly, 
we would see the, the War of Independence in 1948, the Six-Day War in 1967, the Yom Kippur War. These were not ordinary military victories. Each one of them had just so many miracles attached to that. The Gulf War is only uh, was about 30 years now. From the Gulf War, there were so many miracles, so many incredible miracles. So Rav Ginsburg says that along with the light of Hanukkah, that light has two properties. One is that it brings uh, light, and also it brings it brings heat. So he says that the 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 miracle of the lights, this is the light of Hanukkah, and the victory in the wars, this is the heat, like, like the expression in the heat of battle. This is the other aspect. And so he says an amazing thing is that along with the, the, the idea that there are 36 Sadiqim, 36 revealed Sadiqim, and 36 hidden Sadiqim, there's also in the book of Shmuel and repeated in, in uh, the book of Chronicles, Deva Yamim, that David and Melech had 36 giborim with him. He had 36, like his, his, his core group, his chevra, that he could count on. There were 36, and, but there they're called giborim. So Rav Ginsburg says that, that each one of these, the 36 Sadiqim and the 36 Giborim are representing the two different levels of, of, of light, of light and heat. So along with this, let's go one step further because it's very connected to the, the, the Parshiot that we're learning is that when the angels ask Avram, or at that time he thought they were just regular people, where is your, where is your wife? Where is Sarah? He answered, Hine ba'ohel. She's in the tent. Ohel. So Rav Ginsburg explains that if you take the three letters of Ohel, the Roshi Tevot, it spells two different uh, connections to light. Or Hameir Lezulat, or is the Aleph, Hameir is the He, Lezulat is to someone else, a light that one extends to other people, that one gives out light into the world. And that spells Ohel. And the same letters spell Or Hameir Laatzmo, a light that shines within a person. So the simple understanding of an Ohel, when Avram said she's in the tent, this represents Or Hameir Laatzmo that we all have this inner light, as we said before, that the lights of Hanukkah represent the, the light within each person, and that we have the ability on Hanukkah to reveal our own hidden light. But we know about Sarah, and even though Avram said, Hine ba'ohel, she's in the tent, but we know from tradition that she, along with Avram, were turning the whole world on to the idea of one God. That Avram spoke to the men, and Sarah spoke to the women, and they were going out. They were taking their inner light, and they were spreading it out. And that's the first thing that God says to Avram, lech lecha. Lech means go out. Lecha means to go within. So these are the two types of light 
that we're talking about on Hanukkah. There's, and that's the whole idea of lighting the lights either outside <clears throat> or in, in, in the window. But the idea is that we are presuming Nisa. We're advertising the miracles of Hanukkah, but that represents that each person is taking their inner light, let's call our house, our ohel. So if you would ask today, like, where is your husband or your wife? You'd say in the house, in the home. But here in Hanukkah, we're taking that light and we're sharing it with the whole world. That is the, that is the Jewish mission from the time of Abraham, from the time that Yeshiyahu, Isaiah said that the mission of the Jewish people is to be or goyim, to be a light unto the nations. And to this day, that is, that is our mission. And probably no holiday expresses it more than Hanukkah. Because the simple idea, the simple idea of lighting it outside or that it can be seen from outside, this represents the whole, the kernel of, of, of what the Jewish mission in the world is, from Avram and Sarah <clears throat> to our day. And I'll just, I'll just point out, because starting next week, so we have Leah, Leah and Rachel. Leah is Gematria Ohel. Leah is 36. And <clears throat> between Leah and Rachel, we have the same dynamic. That in Kabbalah, Leah is called Alma de Ikasia, the world, the hidden world. And this word Kasia is Kislev. It's the same root as Kislev. It's the hidden world. Whereas Rachel was more out there. She is called Alma de Igalia, the revealed world. So each one of us has both of these aspects. We have our hidden world that no one knows. <clears throat> and we have that part of ourselves that we share with the world. And going back to Avram, again, to Lech Lecha, that each one of us has to develop their inner light, their Or Hameir Le'atzmo, in order to be able to then share it, Or Hameir Le'zulat. So that is the first Torah that I wanted to give over. And <clears throat> I want to sing another song now. That uh, first I want to say Lechaim. I need to <laughs> something from my voice. Thank my wife again for bringing this to me. Now it's an official for Brengen. Selo Lachaim. Two Lachaims. So I think for those who have been watching every um, pre Rosh Chodesh for Brengen, I sang a niggin last time from Reb Shlomo about Rosh Chodesh. And then I think it was last week or two weeks ago around Rip Shlomo's yurt site. So Shlomo Katz did an amazing, amazing Zoom session where he, he gave over the stories behind many of the nigunim of Rip Shlomo, which makes, makes the nigunim so much richer. So, so this nigun for Rosh Chodesh, he told the story. And it's, it's just an amazing story. So uh, traditionally, when Reb Shlomo would finish a concert, then there was the after concert get together, either in someone's house or in a park, or many times the, the, the rabbi of the city would host him. And these would go to the middle of the night sometimes longer. 
And so it, Reb Shlomo was giving a concert in Sfat. I don't remember which year. It was in Sfat. And there was no official after concert uh, get together. So what Reb Shlomo traditionally would do would say, Chavra, let's get something to eat. <laughs> So they would find some pizza place, some falafel place that was still open, whatever. And there would be a whole group of people. I had the, the merit, my wife and I also, many times being at these after concert um, get togethers. So they went in and traditionally, Reb Shlomo would pay for everyone. That's just what happened. So everyone ate whatever they ate. And then Reb Shlomo reached into his pocket and usually he'd be paid. In those days, you would get paid on the spot for the concert. But for some reason, he didn't get paid and he looked in his wallet, he had no money. And, and just all these people had just eaten. So he very embarrassingly, he goes up to the, the, the owner of the restaurant and he says like, I don't know how this happened, but I have no money. Don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll come back tomorrow. I'll get some money. I'll pay you. And the the owner of the restaurant said, you know what? I won't take anything from you on one condition, that you make up a niggin right now. <laughs> right now, you have to make up a niggin, and then you don't have to pay. <laughs> and so... Reb Shlomo came up with this niggun that I don't know if, I don't remember if Shlomo Katz said that he put it to these words right away, but he came up with the niggun right on the spot. So this is the niggun, and the words are from Musaf of Rosh Chodesh. So I'll sing the niggun, and then uh, I'll add the words. I I I I I I didn't, I didn't translate the words. Mizbeach Chadash, a new altar. But Zion Tachin should be established in Zion, in Zion. And the 
offerings of Rosh Chodesh should be offered once again. Okay, so we only have 15 minutes left, and this is absolutely one of my favorite Hanukkah Torahs that I learned from Rav Ginsburg. And uh, uh, maybe some of you know, but I actually wrote a book uh, called The Lights of Hanukkah, A Hundred Meditations. A hundred different meditations short of what we could be thinking about when lighting the lights. Because a lot of times we, we light the lights of Hanukkah and they're beautiful and they're spiritual, but sometimes we just, what are we supposed to be thinking about? What kavanas can I have? What, what should I be thinking about? So the one I'm going to give over, I learned from Rav Ginsburg, and it just, it just has stayed with me forever. So up to now, the first Torah we gave over was about the 36 candles of Hanukkah. But if you add the, the eight shamashim, so we have 44 lights. And if you, and, okay, you have 44 lights. And we know in Gematria, there's this idea of adding the kolel. And when you have a number, a word that's translated into a number, you can add one to the total for even a, a, a fuller manifestation of, of that word. So if you take the 44, excuse me, 44 lights and you add the one, then you have 45. 45 equals Adam, a human being. And so one of the, 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 the most important kavanot for the lights of Hanukkah is, is a pasuk, is Ner Hashem Nishmat Adam, that the candle of God is the soul of man. Now this is a very, very deep idea. But again, Adam is 45, and these are the 44 lights of Hanukkah, and then the one, which is really the oneness of God, all together is we have Adam. And so we have this idea of the, the candle of God, the light of God, is the soul of man. The soul is a chalak elokam ma'al mamash, an actual part of God above. Okay, now we're going to go another step. For those who have been here from the beginning, we've learned that, that there's two levels of light. Like there's two levels of tzaddikim. There's a revealed level and there's a hidden level. And there's a light that is for within and there's a light that goes out. So light has two levels. Plus you have physical light and you have the hidden light, the organ news that is enclosed in the physicality. So if you take two levels of light, we're, again, we're lighting 44 candles, but if you take both aspects, then you have 88. What's the significance of 88? 88 is the word nachal. Nachal means a stream, a river, a stream of water. So now, Rav Ginsburg explained that the Ashkenazic version of the blessing that we say on lighting the lights is, Asher ki chanu b'mitzatah lahadlik ner shel Hanukkah. And the Ari took out the word shell. And his version was, lahadlik ner Hanukkah. So the reason is, why would the Arizal take a word out of a well-established blessing? So it's explained that with the word shell, there's 14 words to the blessing. But if you take out the word shell, there's 13 words. 13 is the 13 midot of Rachamim. 
So the Ari wanted that the, every word of the blessing for lighting the lights was connected to one of the levels of Rachamim. Okay, what does that have to do with the Nachal? If you take out the word shell, and, you, and the last three words are Lahadlik, Ner, Hanukkah, it's not in, the, in that order, but you have the three letters of Nachal. Lahadlik, you have the Lamed, Ner, you have the Nun, Hanukkah, you have the Chet. So it spells Nachal. So the Ari gave us a visualization in modern uh, psychology and, and meditation. Visualization is a big, a big thing. It ha has very deep roots in, in, in Jewish thought, in Kabbalah. So the Ari said that when we light the lights, we should imagine that there is a nachal of light coming down and engulfing us, surrounding us, entering into us. And from the time I learned this, it's just like, whoa, what, 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 a, 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 what a beautiful image to have. And here we have also just this beautiful idea because we're lighting the lights from below. And when we light the lights from below, we're drawing down a nachal, a river of light, a, a stream of light. And the stream of light, though, is the 13 meter to Rachamim. Because in Kabbalah, it's explained that the, again, this is a visualization. It, we're not meant to take this physically. It's a physical uh, image of a much deeper spiritual concept. But we're told, how do we <clears throat> access these 13 Miro <clears throat> So it's explained that it's, as it were, that the divine beard has 13 parts. And the Mira to Rachamim are flowing down the beard, are flowing down the beard. So give me one second. <clears throat> so this is connected to, if anyone wants to look it up afterwards, this is a Tehillim Kuf Lamed Gimel, 133, the 133rd Psalm. I'll read it very, very quickly, and you'll see the connection to what we're talking about here. And I have to do this very quickly because there's a class in seven minutes, and it can't be late. It's a Shira Malot, one of the Shira Malot. Ladavi, hine matov manaim shevet achim gam yachad. How beautiful, how good and beautiful it is when brothers dwell together. Now listen, kishemen hatov Al Harosh your red al Zakan Zakan Aharon. It's like goodly oil flowing from the head down the beard of Aharon. She your red al Pimirotav that flow down, and it's usually translated on over the, the, the hem of his garment. But mirotav means the mirot of the of the heart. So here we have the mirot of Rachamim are flowing down through the beard into the heart. And then it says, Ketal Khermon Shiared Al Haret Sion, like the dew of Mount Khermon that flows down to all the other mountains of Sion. Kishem Kisham Siva Hashem et Bracha, because there God established his, commanded his Bracha, Chaim Ad HaOlam, life for everlasting life. So what we see here is this idea of flow. And again, we, we have what's called 
the, we're told that there's two types of light, or yeshar and or chozer. There's a light that is called the straight light that comes from above, and there is the returning light that comes from below. So this is a classic chicken and egg kind of formula. When we're lighting the Hanukkah candles, on one hand, we're lighting it from below and drawing down a nachal of, of compassion, of light, of spirituality, of godliness. On the other hand, what is inspiring us to light from below? So that's the light is actually coming from above, inspiring us to light from below. And they're both true. They're both true, depending on just what perspective we're looking at this. And so if, if we look even deeper, so there's something about water and light that goes together. And that is that they're both waves. Just like water are waves, especially like stand on, on, on the ocean or Yam Kinneret or even, even on a stream, you'll see the waves of the light, of, of water. But we know now in science that light is also a wave. So this idea of a nachal of light, a river of light coming, flowing down upon us, has many, many different levels from, from physical to spiritual. So connecting water and light, a, one of the Naveen talks about a river of light, Kamei Nahar, in in um, draw yikra in, in zmira draw yikra that shalomim ten kame nahar we're asking God please give us peace like a flowing flowing river so this this is just a very very beautiful image there's one other part here that we we, we don't we don't have the time to go into, but there are actually 13 different synonyms for light. There are 13 different synonyms. And what's interesting of that is five of them have the word har at the end. Zohar, Sohar, Nahar, bo, Bohar. There's, there are 13 cinnamons of light that end with har, and har is a mountain. So for those who are, who are following the, the psalm we just read, so the idea is that after the, 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 the oil is flowing down, then it says, ketal chermon shered al hareit Sion, like the dew of the chermon that is flowing down on the on the mountains. So the one of the parshas in the Torah is Bahar in the mountain. Bahar is Gematria or Gematria light. So the idea that five of the 13 synonyms end with the idea of Har meaning mountain is because where in most cases where is water coming from? Where is the source of streams and rivers and, and springs? It's in the mountains. And we just made this beautiful connection between water and light. And in the mountain, Behar equals light. And I'll just end with one other gematria. I'm, I'm sure everyone knows this, but it ties everything together, is that the gematria of light, 207, is also the same gematria of Ein Sof, of the inf infinite. So we began with this idea of Hanukkah, the lights of Hanukkah revealing the hidden lights, the Or Haganus, 
So I just want to end with a bracha. I see Miriam there, smiling, ready to come on. So I just want to give everyone a bracha that, that we really can access all the, everything we said tonight for those people who are following are talking about two different levels of light. There's the revealed light and there's the hidden light. There's the revealed tzaddik and the hidden tzaddik. There's a light that shines within a person, or hama'ir la'atzmo. There's a light that shines out to other people. Then there's lech lecha. There's going out and there's going in. And, and then we have the physical light and the spiritual hidden light that's within it. So I just want to give everyone a bracha that this Hanukkah, we can all access our own inner light and then have the, the O's, have the strength and the inspiration to fulfill the Jewish mission of sharing it with the whole world. Thank you very much, everyone.